Hi guys, welcome back to the Chef Share series. Uh, Chef Rosser here again with you. Uh, this week we're gonna be looking at traditional French mother sauces. Uh, now the five mother sauces as we teach them here at EPCC are velout and bechamel. Those are two white sauces. Uh, velout has a stock base added to roux uh, as a thickening agent. Bechamel is a milk base uh, with roux as a thickening agent. Uh, the next one is an espanol. It is the only brown sauce, uh, so it, that is that uses dark stock. Uh, that it, the, that comp, that procedure is a bit more complicated. Uh, we're going to take a, a really nice brown stock, uh, typically veal, and then we are going to add flavor to that by caramelizing down uh, aromatics, mirepoix, with a pincé of tomato paste, and then simmering that down re with, by reduction. Uh, to intensify the flavors. Now, uh, uh, that sauce is the basis for a demi-gloss. Uh, the next two sauces are kind of late additions to the mother sauces, and that's tomato, which is you know, inherently from Italy, and then finally hollandaise, uh, which comes from a little further north in Europe, uh, the, you know, the Dutch kind of area, the uh, North Atlantic coast. So, um, the, the reason these are called mother sauces is because very rarely, with the exception of hollandaise and tomato sauce, are they used on their own. Uh, the mother sauces are used to make small or derivative sauces. In the case of hollandaise, if you add tarragon to it, it becomes a Bernays sauce. Uh, what we're going to demonstrate for you guys is uh, with the bechamel, is we're going to add cheese to it to make a Bernays. Uh, we're going to do a straight tomato sauce. Uh, and we did the, uh, for the velout, we added sausage to it to make like a sausage cream gravy. So uh, that's the explanation of mother sauces and derivatives. I uh, hope you like this series. Uh, let us know if there's anything you'd like to see. We'll get started right now. Today we're gonna be doing a velout uh, sauce with sausage. So. It, Kind of like a, our take on an old-fashioned sausage gravy. Uh, we're gonna go through the steps and the finishing process for this right now. For this I have about two pounds of handmade sausage. Uh, this is a pork and beef mix and we're gonna start sauteing this right now. So for the sausage filling we've got our pan heating up over medium high heat. I'm gonna add a few tablespoons of oil, just regular blended vegetable oil. We're gonna get this nice and hot, and then we're gonna start the process by browning off our sausage, our, our house-made sausage. So uh, remember, saute hot pan, cold oil. We're gonna get this sausage in here, let it brown, and we're gonna to try to break it up into small pieces. So we want it nice and crumbly in here. We don't want larger pieces, so we're gonna use our rubber spatula and just kind of break it up as it's browning. We want to get a really nice, deep brown color on this uh, to bring out all the flavors of this beautiful sausage. And we're going to be adding some spices to this. We're going to be adding fresh thyme, parsley. We're also going to be adding a little dry sage and um, red pepper flakes, salt and pepper. Uh, so as you can see, I'm breaking this up as it's starting to brown. I'm not doing a lot of turning. All I'm doing is pushing smaller pieces away from the large piece and making sure that we have nice, even coverage over the bottom of the pan. You can hear it sizzling, and we don't want this shoot cold because it will just kind of poach in its own juices. We want to get that browning effect, so nice, hot flame and we'll come back and show you the browned results. Okay, so our sausage has been browning for a couple of minutes, and it's, I'm gonna start turning, and you'll, you'll notice that we start getting some of the browning on the bottom. So, I'm gonna turn this and let that browning continue, but at this point, I'm gonna start adding some seasoning. We've got that browning going on, and we wanna let that continue until the sausage is cooked through. And then we're gonna add our aromatics. So at this point, I'm just gonna add some salt. Ground pepper. A little bit of 
red chili flake. And this is about a teaspoon to start, and then we'll check it for spice and add more if we need. And a little ground sage. This is gonna give us that flavor profile of breakfast sausage. So we wanna start getting this in early. We're gonna add our fresh herbs and onions in just a little bit. So at this point, our sausage is nicely browned and we're gonna add our aromatic ingredients. So I have some, some small diced onion here and we're gonna add about a cup of that in there. We're also gonna add some fresh chopped thyme and you can put whatever aromatics you like in there, uh, rosemary, whatever the case is. But, and some fresh parsley. You really want to liven this up because this can be a heavy kind of uh, sauce. So we're going to give it some lightness and freshness with these fresh herbs. So a good amount of that fresh parsley. And just continue to stir this until it's time to add our flour. Now, by adding flour to this, what we're going to essentially do is create a roux in this pan. So we don't want to add that until these onions cook down and soften up and these aromatics really get infused into this sausage base. So we're building those layers of flavor one at a time uh, until we get to the point where we add the flour. Because once we have that flour, we're, gonna, we're not going to cook very much more. We're going to let that starch cook um, just a little bit, fine with these, with these residual oils. And if, you have, if your pan is really dry and you don't have a lot of oil left in there, you can add some as you need, just because that's what's going to bind this sauce once we add our stock. Remember, this is a balut, not a bechamel, so our base is stock rather than milk. So this is a bit of a departure from a traditional cream-style gravy. Uh, we're going back to uh, one of the mother sauces, uh, French cooking, and we're going to make the balut rather than the bechamel style. Okay, so as you can see, our sausage is cooked down really nicely. We've got a great browning effect. Those onions are softening up. Uh, now, we want to give those onions plenty of time to soften up uh, so that they don't become intrusive into the sauce. Uh, we want them to add to the sauce, not take away from it. So at this point, I'm going to add about a cup of flour. You need to make sure, like I said, you have enough oil in there. Uh, turn down your heat significantly because it's going to start sticking and just stir. So I'm going to add about a cup of flour. Like I said, don't be afraid to add a little more oil if you need just to bind with that flour. So that's a little more than a cup. And that should bind about two quarts, two and a half quarts of liquid, which is what we're planning on adding. So um, you'll see that it gets really tasty and starts getting sticky. So I'm turning my flame down. So I'm turning it down nice and low. And we're gonna let the carryover cooking uh, just toast those starches a little bit. Uh, we don't want a, a real, like a white blonde, a white roux. Uh, we want this kind of blonde. We want to have some color and some flavor in there. So we're going to let this cook for a few more minutes and just get that, just keep building those flavors. Uh, just, you want to make sure that you're stirring constantly because this will start sticking on the bottom. Some sticking is fine because once you add the liquids, it will deglaze the fond in the bottom of the pan and uh, pull up all that great flavor and color. Uh, but if, it, if your flame's too hot, it's just gonna burn. Okay, so we've cooked our roux down significantly uh, and we've got a little color on that flour. You can see by what's sticking to the bottom of the pan and don't worry about that, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna deglaze that. But we've got some beautiful color in here. Uh, now remember when dealing with roux and thickening liquids, one needs to be hot, one needs to be cold. Okay, so we've got our hot roux uh, with the sausage base in the pan. So I need to add cold stock. Uh, with, uh, also with roux, remember that the darker they get, the less thickening power they have. They, they bring more intensity of flavor to the equation, but they don't thicken so much so well the darker they get. So we don't want to let this get too dark. So here I've got about two quarts of cold stock, and I'm just going to start pouring it in. 
I'm gonna reserve just a little bit to see how this thickens. So I'm gonna reserve about a cup or two to see how that thickens. And I've got plenty if I, more if I need. And then I'm just gonna start stirring. Remember keeping it over that relatively low heat. You want to just, you don't want this to um, start getting lumpy. So just a gentle stirring as that deglazes the pan, the starch is lined with the liquid and you'll get that thickening. Uh, Roux do not uh, fully thicken until they come to a boil. So you need to bring them to a boil and then drop them to a simmer uh, for, you want to simmer them for at least 10 minutes, 20 is probably better, so that you can uh, dissolve all of those starches and any impurities and excess fats float to the surface, surface and you can skim those off. So always make sure you give this a nice, at least 10, if not 20 minutes simmer after you get that thickening action and adjust your consistency, obviously. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this with some heavy cream just to give it that kind of creamy finish and consistency that you would expect out of a cream gravy, but with using a stock base. So as you can see, this has thickened up significantly, and this has gone past the point uh, of thickness that I'm looking for as far as the finished consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that stock that I had reserved to, to get this to the proper consistency, and then we're gonna go ahead and simmer this down. So everything is working great right now. We've got a, a great base for this velout going. Remember, we need to simmer this. Um, and during the simmering process, if you get any excess fat or any of the uh, proteins from the starch uh, floating up to the surface, go ahead and skim those off so that you can have the nicest product possible in the end. Okay, so now we've simmered our sausage balloon down for about 20 minutes, and we've got a really nice, thick consistency. Uh, what we're gonna do for the finishing step on this is we're gonna add heavy cream. So uh, what the heavy cream is gonna do is it's gonna help the mold, keep the sauce nice and emulsified. It's gonna bring some dairy fat and some richness to it as well. And it's also gonna give it that creamy color and consistency that we're looking for from this type of gravy. So the only thing that's different, remember, is we're using stock as a base rather than milk. And so we're gonna go ahead and finish with the dairy. I'm gonna add about two cups of this heavy cream. And then we're gonna stir it in. And then obviously we're gonna check it for seasoning and consistency. Um, if this gets really thick on you, you can uh, thin it out with more stock, or if it gets uh, too thin, uh, you can just reduce it or simmer it for longer. So you can tell by the, the appearance that that, that that heavy cream has really got in there and creamed it out beautifully. And that looks more like what we're after as far as a finished product. We're going to be serving this with fried chicken tomorrow. And there is our finished sausage food. And hi, today I will be preparing the, the tomato sauce objective for you. Uh, the tomato sauce is one of the five wonder sauces. Um, here I have my ingredients. I have clarified butter, violet, um, mirepoix, which is onion, uh, celery, and carrots, and a tomato concasse, tomato paste, Parsley and then the basil. The basil I will be showing uh, how to the chef and not for uh, the addition towards the end of the objective. So we're going to start by adding the clarified butter to the pot. Now you have to melt a little bit. And then we're going to add garlic. Our beer pot, onion, celery, and carrot. Ingredient, which would be the tomato composite and the tomato paste. 
So here the onions are already um, finished cooking, well not cooking, but they are translucent, which allows us to add the next ingredient, which is a tomato composite. It's a tomato that's been peeled and The, the sauce after it simmered and I did mix in some ar more aromatics, parsley and basil and the basil is chiffonade and this sauce is ready to use. This, use, this sauce will be used for cannellonis uh, but you can use it for many things. Really delicious. So this sauce that we're going to make now is a hollandaise. Now the basis of a hollandaise rather than using stock or dairy as the liquid for the sauce we're going to use clarified butter uh, and that's that's really kind of a departure from the rest of the butter sauces it is a butter base and we're going to use egg yolks as a, a as an emulsifier now uh, with egg yolks one egg yolk will emulsify about six ounces of butter 
Uh, so the water portion of this sauce is just going to be lemon juice and Tabasco sauce and maybe a tablespoon of cold water just to get to the right consistency and we'll do that probably at the end. So to be on the safe side, I've got six egg yolks in here. I've got about 14 ounces of clarified butter. Um, I want to make sure that I have a strong emulsion. Um, the chemical that we're looking for to do the work in the egg yolks is called lecithin, And lecithin is a, a protein that's got a positive charge on one end. It's a little strand, squiggly strand. So on one end, it has a positive charge that is attracted to water. On the other end, it's got a negative charge that is attracted to oil. And that's how we can keep these in suspension without breaking out the water base and the oil base. So um, the procedure is really simple. It's just whisk. But we have to get to uh, the proper consistency before we start adding the butter. So what I'm going to start with uh, in a heavy gauge bowl over simmering water, I've got a towel over my pot. Just to, just to keep everything stable. I've got a nice balloon whisk here. Uh, I've got my Tabasco sauce uh, for seasoning, my lemon juice to start, and my clarified butter, salt, pepper, and egg yolks. Really simple uh, kind of sauce, uh, but really what it comes down to is the technique and how we add everything in. So once we get the lemon juice in there, what we need to do is get the egg yolks in there. Uh, and we're going to whip these egg yolks until they become light and frothy and that is known as creating the sabayon. And the sabayon is that egg yolk foam. Uh, so what we're looking for as these heat and cook while they're getting whisked is that they are getting light and fluffy. Okay? Now you'll, you'll notice that it starts to get light, paler in color almost immediately. That's because it's, it, it's combining with the acid and the lemon juice. But we're looking for it to get frothy. So we're just going to whisk and whisk as this heats up and look for that sabayon de form. Now what I want to do right in the beginning is get a little bit of salt in here, about a half a teaspoon, so that it dissolves in the liquid and will carry that flavor. I'm also going to get a little bit of white pepper in here to start, just a pinch. And once this gets light and frothy, then I'm going to start streaming in my butter. So we'll come back and take a look at that. So we're getting to the proper consistency. Uh, I'm looking for this to thicken up just a little more. I turned down my heat. Um, it does have the pilot light, um, the warmth from that uh, simmering water is giving enough to finish this. If this does get too hot, uh, I, I will just move it off of the heat. It's not a big deal at all. Uh, so it's, as you can see, this is starting to thicken up a little bit. I want a little thicker consistency on this before I start adding the butter. As you can see, I've got all my ingredients here. It's a very simple sauce. Really, it's about technique. And you can find a hundred different recipes for this. Uh, but it's all about adding the butter at the proper time and in the proper amount. If you add the butter in too fast, this will break. So, you want to make sure that none of your ingredients are too hot. It's kind of a warm sauce. Once you make this sauce, you need to use it immediately. Otherwise, it's going to, it's going to start deflating and, and breaking. Uh, if you do make this and you want to hold it, you can keep it somewhere warm and covered. It'll hold for a couple of hours at the most. All right, so now we're really nicely thickening up. I want to be able to see a line when I draw my whisk through, and it's just about there. My butter is nice and warm as well. So what I can do is take this off of the heat and start adding the butter. I'm going to keep it on here just to watch it. So now I, I see a line when I'm dragging my, my whisk through. It's nice and frothy and foamy. It's really important to incorporate the air and partially cook those yolks. So you can see that. It's really nice. You can see the line as I drag that through. That's a nice sabayon. Remember the sabayon is the egg yolk foam. All right, so uh, 
the butter, I have a little two ounce ladle and I'm just gonna strain it in a little tiny bit at a time. A few drops to start. Because what I'm looking for the whisk to do is break those drops of butter up into really tiny particles so that it adheres to the lecithin and the egg yolks. And it combines this all together nicely. So I start out very slowly, and then as that emulsion builds, I can, I can stream in a little quicker. My pot's kind of dancing on me, but that's okay. And you can tell the consistency on this changes almost immediately to very light and creamy now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep adding my butter until I get to the consistency I like. that this is getting nice and light and fluffy and I'm going to keep adding more butter. I'll probably add about four more ounces. I want to lighten this up just a little more uh, just to make sure that we get enough of this to, to look at. All right? But I can add my, I can stream my butter in at this point a little faster because that lepithin is doing its job. right now, before I do my last addition of butter, that butter is causing the sauce to look a little heavy and almost mayonnaise-like in consistency. We're going to fix that at the end with just a little bit of cold water. I'm going to do my last addition of butter. This one can go in fairly quickly. Get that all in your pan. is the holiday sauce. So at this point, what we need to do is check it for seasoning, right? So we're gonna bring it over here. Uh, you know, okay, so here's that holiday. So what I'm gonna do at this point is add some seasoning. So we're gonna start with our Tabasco, just give it a couple of dashes. I like adding it at the end because it really brightens up the sauce. And the, the, for me, the more Tabasco, the better. And then it'll give it a little bit of a reddish hue. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of cold water, just drizzle it in, just to lighten up the texture and consistency. And I've added about a half an ounce or a tablespoon of water, and it really makes the sauce light and creamy, and it helps to kind of reflow it. And I'm just gonna add another tablespoon or so, just to get that exactly where I want it. This is definitely a workout for the arm and shoulder, uh, but well worth it. And if you're in the restaurant, uh, you can do this in a blender or in a food processor uh, just to kind of save time. Uh, once you get this technique down, it's really easy to take this to a mechanical uh, production kind of uh, phase, especially in the restaurants where you make this three or four times during the shift. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and taste this for consistency. Nice and bright from the Tabasco sauce. I'm just gonna add a pinch more salt and a little bit more white pepper. And that is hollandaise. Now remember, if I was gonna make a Bernays, um, I would probably do a reduction with shallots, white wine vinegar, uh, and peppercorns and tarragon before, instead of lemon juice and then go through the remainder of the procedure. Uh, so, try making hollandaise. It's really fun and you can totally impress your guests at a restaurant. All right, there it is, enjoy. All right, today we're gonna to be making a white brew for the bechamel sauce. We have four different, uh, four different brews. That is a white brew, a blonde brew, a brown brew, and a Cajun brew. For every single root, there is different binding power. The darker it becomes, the less binding power it has. Though, you're gonna have a whole lot more flavor that comes into the sauce. All right, now what we're going to be starting first is we're gonna be heating up our butter and making, making sure that it's completely melted before we start adding the sauce. Now 
what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a stainless steel pan rather than an aluminum pan because if you start mixing it with uh, any sort of metal scraping material such as this whisk, it will start darkening up and making it look very gray. And you want this session of stuff to look very nice, white, and very silky. So what we're using today is we're using a stainless steel pot. Alright, now that our butter is completely melted, we are going to start the kind of the flour that we have right here. And we're going to be sprinkling it in little by little, rather than putting it all the way from all at once. Because if not, we're going to be making it very lumpy and you're not going to be getting a very consistent groove. So you just add a little bit at a time. Start slowly stirring it in. You add a little bit at a time just so you can incorporate the flour. And yes, the butter is yellow, but with the flour that you're constantly adding it, it's going to become a white blue rather than a blonde. Just make sure that you stir it constantly. So you can make sure that it's nice and smooth and not too long. As you add your flour, the roux is going to be coming thicker and thicker, just so you can, just so you can make the bechamel sauce nice and smooth. The reason that the roux is is what we use for the different sauces because it's a thickening agent, and so the thicker that the roux is, it's going to make your sauce a little a little more velvety and it'll have a lot more volume rather than being very runny. Just make sure as you are making your roux that you're scraping the bottom of the pan as well. Because if not, what's gonna, what's gonna happen is that your roux is gonna start cooking and it's gonna be changing the color entirely. So since we're looking for a white roux, not a blonde, uh, a white roux rather than a blonde roux, you want to keep turning it constantly more and more so. So if not, you're gonna, it's gonna cook more and it's gonna become darker and darker. So what we're looking for, we're looking for a flat and rather than blonde. And this is the consistency that you're gonna want with your roux. The way that you know that your roux is done is that you'll get a, a nutty smell towards it. So once you smell that, you know that it is done. All right, now we're gonna be setting off this roux to the side because what we want to do is do two different ways. We could do the hot roux into a cold liquid or the hot liquid into a cold roux. And for this sauce, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a cold roux into a hot liquid. Well, for your bechamel sauce, what we're going to start off with, we're going to go ahead and make the sauce. We're going to go ahead and warm up two gallons of milk. Okay, and we're going to bring that up to a simmer. We're going to make sure that it does not boil. We're going to pack the milk. Once the milk is simmered, then we're going to add our roux. Okay. Okay, now that we've added our milk, we're going to bring that to a simmer. We do have extra milk in order to uh, adjust the consistency later if needed. We do need to have it warm. We do, at this time, have onion piquet, which is the traditional way to have it. What you will see at restaurants normally is the bay leaf on the bottom with the cloves on, holding the bay leaf together. We're also going to have white white pepper, nutmeg, and salt. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add our PKs now. Okay, now that our milk has been simmering for about 20 minutes, it's released its flavors from the onion because it's finished cooking and the cloves and the bay leaf. We're now going to incorporate our white roux that Marco made earlier. And as soon as we put it in, we're going to go ahead and whisk vigorously to avoid lumps. Whisk, go to town. Okay, so now that we've added our roux and we're whisk, we do want to bring the, the milk up to boil. Once it boils, then we bring it back down to sea. We want to continue whisking as we do this. We don't want any lumps to be uh, 
gathering at the bottom, so we want to make sure when we whisk, we whisk the sides and the bottom thoroughly. Okay, now that we've brought our milk up to a boil, we're gonna go ahead and add our spices. We're gonna add some white pepper, some salt, and some nutmeg to go ahead and sweeten it up at the end. Nice little tongs. Okay, we're gonna mix it up. Go ahead and let it simmer a little bit longer. We do have our warm milk that we may need, we may not need, but it's almost ready. We just need to strain it. So we want to make sure that it's mapping, and that is coating your spoon. As you can see, the nice coat, it's ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and strain this at this time, remove all the solids from it, and make it a lot smoother and silky. And now that our sauce has gone through the strainer, it's smooth, it's silky, we're gonna go ahead and make a derivative sauce a Mornay cheese sauce. Really, we use Gridera cheese, but today, since we're in the Southwest, we're gonna pick it up a notch. We're gonna use some cayenne pepper, and we're gonna we'll go ahead and use some cheddar cheese. We're gonna incorporate it in batches, not all at once, little pieces at a time. We're gonna go ahead and put a little bit, and then we're gonna stir it up, and make sure that the cheese gets melted into the sauce. sure all the cheese and all the spices get incorporated into your sauce. Okay, now that the cheese and the spices are incorporated, this is exactly what we want. A nice, cheesy, smooth, and rich sauce. Hi, Chef Roscoe here. If you like this video, uh, I encourage you to subscribe, leave a comment, and definitely click on the notification so you don't miss videos in the future. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.